let me talk about our oldest initiative. It triggered about 10 years ago when we looked at the data. India was adding a million people a month to the workforce. And that phenomena was going to continue for the next 20, 30 years. Just in the last 10 years, they've added 250 million people. Another 250 million people will get added in the next 10 years. So all of them would need jobs. So our first initiative really was focused around how do you drive job creation in the country. So this is sort of on the supply side. Mm -hmm. When we looked at the demand side of the equation, almost every single day you will find there are 10,000 problems in India screaming for a better solution. So the demand existed. There were these masses of people that would need the job. What was missing is an entrepreneurial mindset, a culture in the country. Only family-owned businesses ventured into creating new companies. And those are few and far between. You cannot continue to rely on the Tatas and the Birlas and the Ambani's. The culture of the country has been fairly risk averse. Parents always dissuaded their children from taking on any risky proposition. So if you graduated from a top school in India, the drive was go and find the best stable job. We knew that potentially this was either a demographic dividend for the country or it could be a demographic disaster if, uh, if masses of these people would not get jobs. So we ventured on a mission to create entrepreneurs at scale. And we wanted high potential entrepreneurs, those that could create meaningful companies with uh, meaningful jobs that would result in you know, family earning wages or even beyond that. So we targeted college students. Uh, the idea was to take the best and brightest out of these college students and see if we could educate and inspire them to become entrepreneurs. When we started this, uh, we started with the five leading institutes in the country, IIT Bombay, IIM Ahmedabad, and us. So they were our founding partners. But today, if you look forward 10 years from now, we have 500 institutes in the country that are educating about half a million students each year on entrepreneurship. A subset of these uh, half a million students show a deeper interest, typically 20% show a deeper interest in entrepreneurship. So we handhold them through a second level of training. And then the way we measure our success in this program is look on graduation, how many of our students are starting companies. So right now we are on track where every year through the 500 institutes that we worked with, the 3,000 faculty that we have trained, uh, on an average, about a thousand companies a year are getting created by our entrepreneurs. The next thing we said we need to look at is how many jobs are we creating through these companies and are these jobs meaningful jobs? So we have done the first part of that analysis. On an average today, each of these companies is generating about 10 jobs a year. Uh, we are now in the process of looking at what's the average revenue per employee in these companies. So you get some flavor of the level of job that is getting created. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's kind of. And what kind of things do you teach these entrepreneurs? What, right. what are the skills that you impart in these stages of training that seem to be essential? Right. First is, uh, there's, there's a huge debate whether, whether entrepreneurship is, is nurture or nature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and we believe that nurturing can lead to entrepreneurship. In India, if we looked at it, the risk-averse mindset of the parents, and it's a very strong parent-oriented culture. Mm -hmm. a young youth are very strongly influenced by what their parents say and uh, want them to do. So the one part of the equation was also to educate the parents that, yes, there may be risk, but the rewards are also there. Uh, so that that's part of the education system. but. Among our students, it was all around, first of all, to make them aware that when you graduate, you don't necessarily need to find a job. You could, you could create a company, you could create jobs, you can be your own boss. So there was, again, exposure around there is 
something such as entrepreneurship that leads to company creation, that leads to job. And you as a middle class citizen of the country can do that. You know, then there's the next step of really what courses. So how to evaluate uh, business ideas? How to evaluate market? How do I write a business plan? And so on. And as you sort of graduate towards, we have courses around um, how do you raise your first uh, either debt or equity fund? And how do you structure those deals? So those are examples of it. Let me add to the create part. So, so we, we are on track where we are creating a thousand companies a year. Our entrepreneurs are thrown in an environment that is not very friendly towards entrepreneurship. The financial ecosystem is fairly weak. It's You're very, speaking of in, in India now. This is, this, is, this is primarily in India, yes. yes. The financial ecosystem is fairly weak. Policies are not generally supportive. So for instance, sometimes it takes six months just to register a company, depending on um, what domain you're starting a company. And we want to get to a stage where there is a single window and in 24 hours you can start a company. Uh, and then the third segment is, these are all, these are our entrepreneurs are all student entrepreneurs that are graduating. So these are all first generation entrepreneurs that need a lot of hand holding and mentoring. Uh, so we are mm -hmm. essentially building these three ecosystem. So while the next, last 10 years were focused on faculty to train the entrepreneurs who are teaching entrepreneurship to half a million students, we now have shifted our focus from creating entrepreneurs to supporting entrepreneurs because the create process is almost an autopilot. And the idea behind supporting entrepreneurs is to make sure that all those that are starting companies maximize their chance of success, especially in an environment that is not very friendly towards entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we are working in those three ecosystem, working with the government on policies, working with the high net worth individuals in the country to, to become angel investors, educating them around what it means to be an angel investor. And then on the mentoring side, we now, just like we build capacity with institutes, we are building a mentor capacity where we, our goal is to educate and support 1,500 mentors in the countries who can then connect with the mentees who are entrepreneurs so that they can uh, guide them through the process. Uh, so that's sort of what's mm -hmm. happening. You mentioned uh, the role of parents. When I go out to Silicon Valley, people wear their failures like a badge. That's right. There's no stigma. That's right. And that is a subjective psychological norm. That's right. I would imagine in India, parents are not quite so celebratory That's right. about the prospect of failure. That's right. And if you can change yeah. that mindset in the young entrepreneur, That's right. that, how would I say, losing the battle is not losing the war. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, more than the parents is the prospective father-in-law. <laughs> so, uh, no father-in-law wants to see their daughter married to a guy who's starting a company. That was the, it's too risky, you don't yeah. know what will happen, it's too unstable. Mm -hmm. so, Ten years ago, entrepreneurship was a four-letter word. <laughs> yeah. But fortunately, things have changed dramatically over the last ten years, especially in countries like Bangalore and Delhi, you'll see entrepreneurship is flourishing. I mean, when I graduated from IIT, it's about almost 20, 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, we seek the best multinational company job in the country. Hmm. But today, the first choice among IIT graduates is to become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last three years, we have seen some dramatic successes where companies have, startups that started five, seven years ago, have gotten multi-billion dollar valuations. They are raising funds, 300, 500 million. So we now have a few role models that has helped change the parent as well as the father-in-law mindset <laughs> and culture yeah, in the country. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. They, uh, 
how would I say, uh, all the Bollywood actresses will be lining up at IIT looking yeah. for their prospective entrepreneur. <laughs> I think it has become that, yeah. We have, in fact, uh, a lot of these successful um, startups uh, like uh, Make My Trip uh, as an example, Flipkart is another example of a very, uh, have been done by these young 20, 25, 30 year old entrepreneurs and they've yeah. become fairly, really successful. Also, uh, the Silicon Valley uh, structures are coming in where equity to the employees is a standard practice. Mm -hmm. so, the, so even the employees of startup are seeing an opportunity where they are making the big dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's not only entrepreneurs starting companies, but even those joining a startup has become attractive. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Maybe the Bollywood actors that are coming to uh, find their wives, who are the IIT uh, feminine entrepreneurs too. <laughs> that uh, the world's uh, yeah. How you say, in the United States, we're seeing more and more there. And, yeah. uh, uh, it's, I mean, Silicon Valley was not created overnight. It mm -hmm. took a while, and so from a from an India perspective, it's still it's in its first, I would say, five to ten year journey, uh, mm -hmm. and. And things are moving a lot more rapidly. The, the interesting thing is uh, we are seeing increasingly entrepreneurs not only addressing the Indian market, but they are going after the global market. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing opportunities where companies are creating products and services that is applicable at the global level. And that's what the country needs. Yeah. And there, uh, yeah. I know you have many uh, scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs in Northern California that are from India originally. Uh, absolutely, yes, yeah. you're right. I mean, today there is in Silicon Valley, 30% of the startups are started by you know, Indians. Is that right? 30%? Uh, that's extraordinary. That's right. yeah. And in India, they would not do it. But when they came to US and Europe, they they were flourishing. So we, we needed to create that that environment, that mindset, that ecosystem within the country so mm -hmm. that they can mm -hmm. also start to address the local problem. Mm 